opportunity to present my research. I'm Omar Ali, a colorectal trainee in Wessex. So, stoma formation on the surface seems like a technically simple procedure. You perform a trefine and a cruciate incision to deliver the bowel. However, its main complication, parastomal hernia, is quite difficult to avoid, with 50% of colostomies developing a parastomal hernia at five years. This has a significant effect on patient quality of life. Trying to address this, uh, the European Hernia Society has done a review of the literature to try and come up with some recommendations. However, they found a lack of high quality evidence available comparing different surgical techniques and different mesh types. The conclusion was that we should use mesh to reinforce permanent stomas. However, this is seen low clinical adoption rates due to the fear of the disastrous mesh erosion complication. Going back to first principles, incisional hernias and by proxy parastomal hernias are due to chronic repetitive mechanical stress, which alters tissue fibroblast function. And this is thought to lead to a chronic non-healing wound state. So I think to address parastomal hernia, we need to answer two questions. How do we reduce these destructive chronic stress forces? And how can we make mesh safer, but retain its effectiveness? Going back in history, engineers have been tackling these same stress forces. Looking at an airliner, it's a pressurized cylinder like our abdomen, and their windows were a source of mechanical weakness, similar to our stomas. Early windows were square, and the sharp corners at the edges of these square windows resulted in disastrous fuselage failures, similar to our parastomal hernias. They tried a lot of solutions, stronger materials, we don't have that luxury as surgeons, or better welders, but none of them worked. Only by obeying mechanical uh, design principles, by redesigning the window into a circle, did they manage to avoid this disastrous fuselage failure. So going back and applying this to the abdomen, we can think of the abdomen as a pressurized cylinder. It distributes stress in an unequal fashion with the stress across the, the midline incision being four times that of a transverse incision. And these biomechanics actually translate to clinical results. There's been many meta-analysis on uh, incision orientation and incisional hernia rates. However, for today's question of parastomal hernia, this model is really too simple. We need something a bit more advanced. And that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So the aims of this project were to gain insights from biomechanical simulation to see how we can improve the design of the stoma. The primary objective was to look at stoma shape, circular versus cruciate in relation to tissue stress. And the secondary objective was to look at old mesh designs and compare them to my new mesh design with respect to tissue stress. Why did I use simulation? Uh, it can analyze complex shapes rather than the simple equations we've seen before. I can rapidly iterate and improve the design without exposing any patients to harm. And it overcomes the limitations of animal and cadaveric studies. <coughs> how, so how did I do this? I generated a 3D model of the abdominal wall from a CT scan and converted it to tetrahedra, which can be simulated in software. I've used validated software FE Bio, that's specific to biological simulation, and also developed my own uh, mass spring model uh, to overcome its limitations. And statistical analysis was performed to compare the peak and median stresses of both designs. Before doing any comparisons, I've done a pilot study, and it seems that pressurizing the abdominal wall model results in stress concentration at the sites of primary hernia. So the model seems to behave similar to an intact abdomen. Now we make some holes to, to weaken the abdominal wall. The circular soma seems to have distributed stress in a more uniform fashion and resulted in lower stress risers. The APCs of the cruciate stoma seem to be the, weak, the trouble points and the take home message is if you want to enlarge your stoma, you should probably enlarge it laterally because that's the area of least stress. Looking at the influence of stoma shape on tearing of the abdominal wall, the circular stoma resisted abdominal wall tearing uh, at higher pressures. And the bigger the cruciate incision, the weaker the abdominal wall was. One interesting result was that even the circular stoma was tearing at 92 millimeters of mercury. That's below coughing pressures. So it seems that mesh may be essential to prevent parastomal hernia. And this is an accelerated view 
all over many years of the different designs and how the abdominal wall starts tearing in the longitudinal direction first, where the most stress is. So now moving on to mesh, I've simulated different mesh designs in a laparoscopic repair, so in an eye pump position, and compared them to no mesh. I've looked at keyhole, which is a gold standard, where the mesh aperture is equal to the bowel diameter. Sugar Baker, which has no aperture, but has a bowel tunnel. And my new design, where you actually use a loose mesh that's several times larger than the, the bowel diameter. Looking at the stress distribution, the keyhole mesh, as you can see here in blue, is actually protecting the stoma aperture from any stress. The other designs, the stress forces reach the edge and the tissue starts tearing. My novel mesh design performed similarly to the keyhole mesh design. Looking at statistical analysis, there was a significant difference between the keyhole and loose mesh designs and the sugar baker and no mesh designs. And the loose mesh design was not inferior to the keyhole design, which is the current gold standard. How loose is loose? That, so that's a good question. And I've done an optimization analysis. And it seems that you can get away with making the mesh diameter 1.5 times the stoma aperture. Beyond that, you lose the benefits and the mesh becomes too loose. So looking at the two best mesh designs, both of them protect the stoma aperture from stress. However, we know that mesh contracts after implantation by up to 20%, and having mesh in close proximity with bowel can lead to the disastrous complications we all feared in the beginning, stomal stenosis, mesh erosion, and mesh detachment due to shear forces. Uh, looking at the loose mesh design, it avoids this proximity problem, and it's biomechanically valid as well because the cohesive zone theory describes this principle where you can have a loose reinforcement that is actually effective. So in conclusion, the circular stoma improves the resistance of the abdominal wall to tearing. Mesh reinforcement protects the stomal aperture from tearing and the loose, design, loose mesh design is promising, but we need some clinical trials to validate its safety. Uh, and these recommendations are based on solid biomechanical principles, but we need to see if they translate to clinical results. Is this the end of this technology? No, you can extend this technology to looking at anatomotic design, which I've looked at, and even simulation of tissues for real-time surgical training. So that's not really the end of the, the research. This is, is sprouting some new ideas. That's the end of my presentation. Any questions? Brilliant. Sue? No, that, that's really interesting. I, I Stress, but I think what's going on with sugar baker is not designed to do the same thing as other mesh ops. It's actually designed to act as basically a counterbalance to stop herniation. Yeah. So I'm not sure it's valid to compare it in this way with, with these other techniques. Just that's just uh, well, that's that's an excellent point. So the in this study I'm measure, I'm looking at the integrity of the abdominal wall. I'm not measuring uh, displacement of bowel into the hernia sac. Uh, so I, I don't investigate what you're saying, but it does seem to stress the abdominal wall to a point of destruction. Well, does it? I mean, you know, I'll flip that question. Yeah. But the other thing is just, again, just a, this is all very elegant and very perhaps relevant to incisional herniation, but um, it's not quite the same as a peristomal herniation as incisional herniation, because the whole, in your analogy of the aircraft window, isn't quite. It's, it's like driving an aircraft with no glass in the window. There's got to be a hole for the stoma to come out of. And so the mechanics are a bit different to something like an incision or an incisional hernia with mesh, where, um, and I, you know, I don't know exactly what's going on. I, and, and I'm, you know, there'll be a lot more one who had so, information about that. But fundamentally, there's got to be a hole there. Yeah. Its function. And then it I think we have we're accepting the inevitability of a whole. What my work is trying to do is protect the abdominal wall from long-term chronic stress forces that lead to destruction and enlargement. I think herniation is not simply due to a loose hole; it's the chronic destruction of the abdominal wall. With regards to the window analogy, the the abdomen is similar to an aircraft with a window because it's still pressurized. 
we don't the the stoma does not in, decrease intra-abdominal pressure, so it's still a sealed system. Uh, so essentially, still functions like a, a sealed system. Uh, but you're right; I don't simulate the actual herniation. I'm simulating the destruction of the abdominal wall, which enlarges the aperture, which eventually leads to to herniation. Justin. Thank you for a very elegant presentation. Uh, like, like most research, it all comes down to methodology, really. So what reassurance can you give us that the model that you're using is in any way valid uh, and is reproducible and is able to um, actually deliver what you're saying it is? Yeah. I mean, what, what, what validation can you reassure us about? So, Unless that's right, the whole sure. thing is, is meaningless. The, the crux of any research is having sound methodology. So what I've used is FE Bio, which is a finite element analysis suite that specializes and has been validated for simulation of different biological tissues, bone, fascia, muscle, abdominal wall. And the input variables I've used are from cadaveric studies, because we can't establish this in the live human, what the elastic modulus of certain areas of fascia are. Validation-wise, this, tech this technology has been validated with analysis of ruptured aneurysms. They were able to predict the rupture point and the rupture diameter. So the mass adds up, but you're right, we have to do something else to translate it to clinical outcomes. But the mass and the, so the foundations for the mathematics are there. We've analyzed the tissues enough that we know how it behaves mathematically, and that's been validated in the lab. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, um, thanks to everybody for some fantastic talks. The plan of action now is